Get your CGR shirts and glassware at ClassicGameRoom.com. Classic Game Room is brought to you by Magnum Skywolf. CGR is supported by fans on Patreon. Thank you. Welcome to Classic Game Room for the review of Monaco Grand Prix on the Sega Dreamcast. Woo! Drivers, start your Sega Dreamcast. It's Monaco Grand Prix from Ubisoft, released in 1999. Driving games aren't the first thing that comes to mind when I talk about the Dreamcast, but there's a number of good ones on Sega's ill-fated game system like Ferrari F355 Challenge, Test Drive Le Mans, Hydro Thunder, Tokyo Extreme Racer, Daytona USA, and a bunch of other forgettable ones like this. Hurry up! Hurry up! Checkpoint! Monaco Grand Prix, one of the Ubisoft trilogy of racing games. In fact, if we look inside the Dreamcast case, you can see that if you buy two, you get one free. And I'll tell you right now which two you want to buy. <laughs> Not the Suzuki one, that's terrible. Speed Devils is okay, but Monaco Grand Prix is definitely the best of the bunch. The fastest way between point A and B is cheating. This one may seem a bit generic by today's standards, but it's actually got a lot of content. Just look at the track selection, there's loads of courses in here. Numerous camera angles, including a cockpit view, and it plays fairly well too. Just don't confuse it with Super Monaco GP on the Sega Genesis. This is just Monaco Grand Prix on the Dreamcast. Why does no one ever talk about this? Probably because it doesn't have a lot of personality. Checkpoint. It's hard to put a finger on what's missing in this game. It's not bad at all. As you can see, it looks pretty good, and it runs quite well. It's just lacking something. If I had to guess, I would say this one is lacking some, some character. Character that you'll definitely find in games like Tokyo Extreme Racer, F-355, and Daytona USA. This one just feels like a fairly generic F1 game. That being said, it's not bad. If you like late 90s, early 2000s racing games, and you can find this one for less than five bucks, which you should have no problem doing, it's worth playing. I've had a good time with it. It looks good on the CRT and through the Frame Meister. And this one also works with the Dreamcast wheel and it's VGA compatible. There's multiple gameplay modes, including single race, championships, Grand Prix. There's an arcade mode, a simulation mode. And the retro mode. Drive with the wind in your hair and bugs in your teeth. Quick, finish the race before you're bombed by the Kaiser. Would anyone like to buy some tires from Mission Lop? Okay, maybe the game has some more personality than I'm giving it credit for. The advertisements are great and I love the old time environment. Although I wish I could run over some serfs or peasants hauling cartloads of horse manure. These simulation-style racing games are one of the few genres which always benefit from advances in video game technology. You gotta admit, while this is nice on the Sega Dreamcast, playing an F1 game on a souped-up PC or PlayStation 4 or something is just better. That rule doesn't apply to games like Hydro Thunder, which are infinitely fun because it's an arcade game. This is... A combination of an arcade game and racing sim, kind of like Gran Turismo, but not as good. It might be better than Sega GT, though. But here's the thing, Monaco Grand Prix shows how powerful the Dreamcast was for the time, because this blows away F1 games on the original PlayStation. They look like junk compared to this.
While I preferred the arcade mode where you hit the checkpoints before time runs out, the simulation mode has a lot to offer as well, including car customization. You can save your setups and then play through an entire championship. And really, you've got to give this game a lot of credit for the incredible selection of tracks. Checkpoint. You can also race two-player split-screen. While this one is pretty good, it's fairly middle of the road for your Dreamcast racing game. Selection, I wonder if that buy two get one free offer from Ubisoft is still valid. Since I have all those games, maybe they can just send me another one. Here, have a copy of Assassin's Creed Unity. You know what, just keep it. And I've got a classic game room. Shout out and thank you, Gorn, to Jason from Green Bay. Wisconsin. Thank you, Jason. Checkpoint. I like this game, and I do recommend it. If you're picking up a stack of Dreamcast racing games, don't pass this one up. Make sure that you buy Tokyo Extreme Racer 2 first, but if you have three bucks left over, toss in a copy of Monaco Grand Prix as well. Hurry up! If you're going to buy the game anyway, buy it through ClassicGameRoom.com. Classic Game Room is supported by fans on Patreon. Thank you. Now prepare for the Lord Carnage Club where I celebrate these backers on Patreon by shouting their name in a volcano! Derek Langley. Beer is the trick. Steven Chucknick. From... New Jersey! Michael Fernandez! People not named Michael Fernandez aren't Michael Fernandez. Al Stiver! Woo! Jason, 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 Jason from British Columbia! Philip Straubenmuller from Vienna, Austria. Austria! Cue the thunder! Jeff! Captain Dauntless! Briar! Cue the lava. I don't know what lava sounds like. It sounds like this. Jack Stavris from Australia. Oh, hi, Cunny. Master of Thunder. Chip Sankvale, fighter of space bees. Woo. Rick DeBarros gets the extra disco. Michael and Ariana. Nelson. Nelson. Fighters of the future. That's enough disco, because now it's time to shout, Busy Signal! That's right, and keep the volume loud, and the party rocking, for... Sean Zoltek. Really? No. Sean Zoltek! Sergio Matthias Hergert! Tubular. Will. Will. Will? Will. Will. Will.